Hey YouTube, I apologize in advance for not having a shirt on for this video, but it's necessary for later on uh, in order to explain. So let's go into central nervous system adaptation, neural recruitment, and how it pertains to gaining strength, whether you're on a bulk or a cut. So first off, let's talk about central nervous system uh, recruitment. So best analogy is to think about a baby and the first time a baby wants to learn how to stand up. First time that baby goes to stand up, it's gonna fall down because it just simply doesn't have the central nervous system adaptation to learn how to fire their quads and their hamstrings and their glutes sufficiently to stand up. So the first time the baby goes to stand, the central nervous system is just gonna fire a whole bunch and hope that the baby stands up and it's not gonna happen. Next time the baby goes to stand up, the, the central nervous system is now saying, oh, I remember this, like, yeah, okay, well, let's try this again. So on and so forth, your central nervous system will attempt to adapt to learn, uh, the baby trying to learn how to stand up until finally the baby can stand. And every single time that baby goes to stand up, it's able to do so. Why this is, is central nervous system adaptation and neural recruitment. Your brain and your central nervous system has become efficient at performing a task, in this instance, standing up. This is the way all of your muscles in your body work, whether it's your biceps, your chest, your glutes, everything. It all works with central, ner service ne central nervous system adaptation and neural recruitment. All right. Every time you want to go and try a specific workout or a new workout, your body has to adapt to that type of workout. So let's say uh, conventional or sumo deadlift. I sumo deadlift. Now, if I, my central nervous system has adapted to doing sumo deadlifts, if I then go to do conventional, I'm not gonna be able to pull as much weight despite the fact that the muscles are still the same size. It's because I'm changing the way the muscles are gonna be used and the angle that I am lifting with, my central nervous system then has to adapt all over again for a new exercise. So that's why you can be like ungodly strong with one type of exercise and then you change the variation just slightly and you suck at it. So how does central nervous system adaptation and neural recruitment work? Here's why I have my shirt off. So within your body, you have multiple neural pathways that run all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna use my worst muscle group, which is my arms, because I don't really work them very much because I do powerlifting, not uh, bodybuilding. So let's say I wanna flex my bicep, okay? And the end point for where we want the neural recruitment to be is gonna be right here. Okay, that little black dot. So if I go to flex my bicep, and we're pretending that it's the very first time I flex my bicep, my brain is gonna send a neural path as best it can. All right, and that's the pathway it decided to take because you know what? It's the first time it's firing that muscle, so it's just throwing a neural pathway down saying, oh yeah, that'll make it there. The next time you wanna go ahead and flex your bicep, you flex your bicep and it says, oh hey, I know, I remember you doing this. And it's gonna go ahead and pick a different pathway. And that's gonna do its very best, you know, we're looking at that one on top, to get a little bit more adapted and get to that muscle faster, all right? Now that's central nervous system adaptation, okay? Your brain is saying, I remember you doing this, the last time we did it, it kinda worked, so let's find a better way to do that. After repeatedly going over and over and over again, eventually, your brain is gonna figure out the most direct path, all right? So every single time you're flexing your arm and your bicep, or whatever the muscle is, it's always that direct route, the most efficient central nervous system route possible, okay? Now what ends up happening? So once you've done a million bicep curls, does that mean it's all over? No, it doesn't. So keeping with the bicep idea, when you go ahead and lift 40 pound dumbbells, and you can do it 10 times, eventually what's gonna happen is your brain is gonna find the most efficient neural route, all right? And it's gonna recruit that neuron to be able to lift that weight. However, now that you've gotten good at all that, you then load up with 45 pounds and your brain's saying, no, 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 no. Like, we had a deal, buddy. You were gonna lift 40 pound weights and I was gonna figure this out for you the best I could and you changed the deal. So what ends up having to happen now is your central nervous system has to adapt even more. But it's already got the most direct route, so how's it gonna do that? It's gonna do that through neural recruitment. So the more muscle, you, or correction, the, the heavier the weight that you're trying to use, the more efficient that muscle has to be at firing. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's only gonna recruit one neuron. Eventually over time, your brain's gonna be using multiple different pathways because you keep overloading it so that eventually every single time you lift, 
you've got multiple different pathways that are all firing at the same time and hitting that muscle. So rather than just having simply one going, your brain has adapted to fire off 10 because it has to in order to accommodate that new weight. We following here? Now, how does this work with regards to cutting and bulking? All right, now if you're cutting, what ends up happening is you're losing body fat, but you're trying to ma maintain as much muscle as you can. So can you get stronger on a cut? Absolutely. Depending on how long you've been uh, at this game for, there's a chance that you've only got that one perfect neuron that's firing every single time. So now you're cutting and you're not taking in a lot of calories and the muscle's not growing and yet you're still getting stronger somehow. How is that? Well, that's neural recruitment and central nervous system adaptation. Your body is saying, I don't got a lot of calories here and I need to fire this muscle efficiently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get all your buddies to fire at the same time as well. So through neural recruitment, you're gonna get stronger. Now, if you're bulking on the other hand, not only are you gaining uh, mass, but you're also doing small amounts of central nervous system adaptation. If the muscle's starting to get bigger, there's gonna be some CNS adaptation, but not a ton, okay? The reason is, is because the muscle's getting bigger, the body doesn't have to be efficient at firing that muscle because it's just too goddamn big. Muscle can just get fired and it's like, yeah, it'll lift it, don't worry about it. It's once muscle stops growing and your central nervous system has to take over, the strength begins to be central nervous system rather than muscular, all right? On a bulk, you often gain strength once your central nervous system is taxed and you're just building muscle, but when you're cutting, it's all about central nervous system adaptation. And like I said, it doesn't matter what muscle group you're using, what exercise you're doing, every single time you do a rep, your, sit, your body is going to get better at that lift. All right, that's why no matter what you do, you find over time you can still gain strength. You can still gain, uh, um, you know, different lift strength. I think I just repeated myself because this video is like seven minutes long now. So if you have any questions on how central nerve, this is a really broken down easy version of like how central nervous system recruitment works, but I hope you guys understand. The more times you fire a muscle, the more efficient your central nervous system and neural recruitment becomes because your body has to adapt to that. And the more you progressively overload the muscle, even if you're not bulking, that central nervous system and your neurons are gonna become more efficient. They will. It's, it's genetics, it is evolution, it's everything we've ever done as a species, all right? It's how you can get ungodly strong at such a small size. Taking a look at, um, oh God, what was his name? Martial arts expert guy, Bruce Lee. Look at Bruce Lee, okay? He was nothing but raw muscle, mind you, but he wasn't 250 pounds, and yet he was strong as all get out, right? It was ridiculous. Why? Because he had trained his body and his central nervous system to a fine point. It was a well-run machine, and he was able to get away with a lot more than the average person could because of it. So that's what you're looking to do. It takes hundreds and thousands of hours of beating on your craft on a single lift, doing thousands of reps of deadlift, thousands of reps of bench, to get neural adaptation, especially once you've gotten that nice direct pathway, your brain doesn't need to go ahead and change that unless you make it, all right? That's it, guys. I hope that explains how central nervous system adaptation and neural recruitment works as pertaining to gaining strength. Questions and comments, leave it down below. Uh, I hope this was informative. If I missed anything or need to re-explain something, please post it down below and I'll do my very best. And as always, guys, eat like a bodybuilder and train like a powerlifter.